realized in Yusuf alayhi salam. Now the next surah, Surah Ra'ad, uh, surah, surah Ra'ad uh, also starts off with Alif, Lam, Mim, Ra. So it starts off with uh, the, the disjointed letters and it also has a mention of the Qur'an. And uh, the, the first verse of Surah Surah Ra'ad actually tells us what the Surah is about. Uh, the first and the last verse of Surah Ra'ad are actually completely connected. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Tidka ayatul kitab, Walladhi unzida ilayka min rabbika al-haq, walakinna akthar nasi la yu'minun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, These are the verses of the book, and what has been revealed to you from your Lord is the truth, but most people do not believe. Most people do not believe. So basically, uh, the central thesis of this surah is that whether or not people confirm the truth is insignificant, it's irrelevant. So whether people follow you and whether people, or, or whether people accept you or abandon you the way they abandon Yusuf Islam or believe in you the way they eventually believed in Yusuf Islam, that the message is intact and it's the truth no matter what. So if people confirm the truth or they don't confirm the truth, it has nothing to do with the fact that it is the truth. It's irrelevant to be confirmed by people, okay? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that this is the truth. This book is the truth no matter what and nothing can stop it from being the truth no matter what your circumstances are, which in the story of Yusuf, the Prophet is being, the, being given the glad tidings that, that, that you have uh, a story like Yusuf. Your story is going to end like Yusuf salam, with everyone coming back uh, to you and believing in your message. But Surah Ra'ad is also in the same time period. It's the last days of Mecca, the very last days of Mecca. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse 5, وَإِن تَعْجَبْ فَعَجَبٌ قَوْلُهُمْ أَإِذَا كُنَّا تُرَابًا أَإِنَّا لِفِي خَلْقٍ جَدِيدٍ they, they said, and if you are astonished, O Muhammad, then astonishing is their saying, when we are dust, will we indeed be brought into a new creation? Once we're dirt, will we indeed be resurrected? So basically what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying is that, you know, they're accusing you of being crazy and they're accusing you of making this stuff up. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that how illogical is their reasoning as well. That if we die and we become dirt, will we be brought back to life? Because Allah brought them into existence, into being without anything in the first place. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the, the, you know, uh, how, how shackled their minds are. And because their minds and their hearts are shackled, they would, they, they would, they would face the consequences in this world and the next. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and this is actually where the name of the surah Ra'd comes from. Allah says, وَيُسَبِّحُ الرَّعْدُ بِحَمْدِهِ وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ مِنْ خِيفَتِهِ This is verse 13. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And the thunder exalts Allah with praise of Him, and the angels as well from fear of Him. You know, when you see thunder, you say, سُبْحَانَ الَّذِي يُسَبِّحُ لَهُ الرَّعْدُ بِحَمْدِهِ وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ مِنْ خِيفَتِهِ So the dua actually comes from this ayah, that all glory be to Him, who the thunder glorifies Him, and the, the, the thunder declares His praise subhanahu wa ta'ala, as well as the angels out of fear of him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is basically mentioning if human beings fail to recognize and acknowledge Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and acknowledge the truth, everything around us is glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, in verse 24, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلِلَّهِ يَسْجُدُ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ طَوْعًا وَكَرْهًا وَظِلَالُهُمْ بِالْغُدُوِّ وَالْأَصَالِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and to Allah prostrates, Whatever is is within the heavens and whatever is within the, within the earth, willingly or by compulsion, and their shadows as well in the mornings and in the and, and in the afternoon. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is basically saying everything by virtue of its following the, the the laws that Allah has placed, the laws of nature that Allah has placed in this world, is glorifying Allah Subhanahu wa Taala willingly or unwillingly. So by your very existence and by the plants around you and the sun and the moon and so on and so forth, the orbit uh, of, of, of the various uh, systems that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created, all of that is constantly in glorification of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and declaring His perfection. Now in the previous surah, in Surah Yusuf, this is beautiful to show you the connection. In Surah Yusuf, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the reward and glory that comes in dunya in this world for the believers that persevere, okay? That eventually Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the believers victory and He places them in a place of glory. So in Surah Yusuf, the previous surah, the reward of dunya is mentioned. So you don't find anything about Jannah in Surah Yusuf, for example, right? Which is very odd because the entire 
uh, thesis of Surah Yusuf is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give those patient people victory and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will place them uh, in a place of glory so long as they remain firm and consistent. In this surah, in Surah Al-Ra'ad, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the reward in paradise in verse 24, the angel saying, Salamun alaykum bima sabartum fa ni'ma dar that peace be on to you for your patient endurance, your patience and your endurance, and how beautiful of a final abode is this. So basically the reward now that's being mentioned here for your patience and endurance is one of the hereafter, as opposed to that which is in Surah Yusuf, which is one of the dunya. And then Allah subhanahu wa says in verse 28, الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَتَطْمَئِنُّ قُلُوبُهُمْ بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ أَلَا بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ تَطْمَئِنُّ الْقُلُوبُ that those who believe and their hearts are comforted they, you know, by the remembrance of Allah. And Allah said, Verily, in the remembrance of Allah do hearts find tranquility. Why? Because that's Jannah on earth. That's paradise on earth. And no matter what you do to a person in this world, you can't take it out of their hearts. Right? The very famous saying of Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah ta'ala, Shaykh al-Islam, when he was in prison, and he said that, What can my enemies do to me? If they kill me, it's martyrdom. And if they uh, deport me, it's a chance to explore and contemplate the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if they imprison me for life, then it's seclusion with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Jannah in the heart of the dhikr of Allah, of the remembrance of Allah, allows you to persevere in this world. You will find glory in this world will eventually come to you, inshallah ta'ala, when you persevere. And of course, in the hereafter, the angels will remind you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remind you, peace be on to you for your patience and for your endurance. So there's a connection between all of these things. And the last verse of Surah Ra'ad is just like the first verse. So the first verse basically says that Allah does not need people to confirm the truth in order for it to be the truth. It's still the truth. Everything confirms it's the truth. Your existence confirms that it's the truth. The last verse is a response to the verse, the, the first verse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَيَقُولُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لَسْتَ مُرْسَلَىٰ the disbelievers say, you are not a messenger of Allah. They disbelieve and they say, you're not a messenger of Allah. قُلْ كَفَى بِاللَّهِ شَهِيدًا بَيْنِي وَبَيْنَكُمْ وَمَنْ عِنْدَهُ عِلْمُ الْكِتَابِ Allah says to the Prophet ﷺ, say to them, O Muhammad, sufficient is Allah as a witness between me and you, and the witness of whoever has knowledge of the scripture. Meaning what? I don't need you to acknowledge me being your messenger in order to know that I'm the messenger. I'm the messenger of God because Allah appointed me as the messenger of God. So Allah is the witness upon all things. Your confirmation or denial is irrelevant and it's only for your own good. And subhanAllah, what does the next surah start off with? The next surah, which is the last surah in this juz, is Surah Ibrahim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed it in the same time period. And again, Ibrahim is the transition point. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Alif Lam Ra. كِتَابٌ أَنزَلْنَاهُ إِلَيْكَ لِتُخْرِجَ النَّاسَ مِنَ الظُّلُمَاتِ إِلَى النُّورِ بِإِذْنِ رَبِّهِمْ إِلَى صِرَاطِ الْعَزِيزِ الْحَمِيدِ I could seriously do the entire tafsir on this ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, This is a book that we have revealed to you, O Muhammad, so that you could bring mankind out of darkness upon darkness upon darkness into the light by the permission of their Lord to the path of the exalted in might, the praiseworthy. Why is, this so, so, why is this such a beautiful response to what we've heard in Surah Ra'ad? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Allah doesn't need you, and the book does not need you, and the messenger doesn't need you. And here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, and by the way, the purpose of this message is to take you from darkness to light, which can only be done by the permission of your Lord to the path of the all exalted in might and the always praiseworthy. SubhanAllah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds, that if you want to be guided to the path of Al-Aziz Al-Hamid, the path of the one who's always exalted in might and always praiseworthy, then it is for your own benefit and for your own good. Allah or the Messenger do not need you. It is your loss if you turn away and it is your success if you turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So whoever turns to Al-Aziz, فَهُوَ عَزِيزٌ بِعِزَّةِ اللَّهِ Whoever turns to the one who's all honorable, all exalted in might, then he becomes honorable by the honor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And whoever turns to Al-Hamid, the one who is praiseworthy, فَهُوَ حَمِيدٌ بِحَمْدِ then, then he will be praised by the praiseworthiness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is what is good for you. And in verse 4, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ رَسُولٍ إِلَّا بِلِسَانِ قَوْمِهِ لِيُبَيِّنَ لَهُمْ فَيُضِلُّ اللَّهُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَيَهْدِي مَنْ يَشَاءُ 
And we did not send a messenger except speaking in the language of his people to state things clearly for them. So basically Allah is saying, I gave you a chance. The people of Mecca were given a chance. You had a prophet from amongst yourselves who spoke your language, who you've known for 40 years to be the most honest and trustworthy and truthful person, most generous and beloved person to you. And he made things clear to you. And we don't punish a nation unless we send a messenger that speaks to the people in their language. And again, through that, Allah guides who he wills and leads astray who he wills. And he remains exalted in might and exalted in his wisdom, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah mentions in the context of Musa, alayhi salam, speaking to Fir'aun, وَإِذْ تَأَذَّنَ رَبُّكُمْ لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ وَلَإِن كَفَرْتُمْ إِنَّ عَذَابِ لَشَدِيدٌ And when your Lord made the announcement, your Lord proclaimed that if you are grateful, I will increase you. And if you are ungrateful, if you disbelieve, then the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is severe. Notice in this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ If you're grateful, I will definitely increase you. And he said, if you're not grateful, my punishment is severe. He didn't say, لَأَعَذِّبَنَّكُمْ I will punish you. Because you might repent or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala might show mercy on you and forgive you so you would not be punished. But the point here is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning it is for your own good that you show gratitude to Allah and that you believe in Allah. It's for your interest in this world. You would be increased in this world like Yusuf alayhi salam and you would be increased like the people of Jannah are mentioned in Surah Ra'ad in the, in the darajat, in the degrees of Al-Jannah. So it's for your own good. And if you are grateful, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will always increase you. And Musa alayhi salam says, in takfuru antum wa man fil ardi jami'an fa inna Allah ghaniyun hamid. If you turn away, you and everyone else on the face of the earth, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is free of need and always pra- praiseworthy. So again, it's the same context that Allah does not need you. You need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, if you go to verse 21, Allah mentions the human shaytan. Okay? The human shaytan comes in the form of the one who leads you astray, in the form of someone who's giving you sincere advice. So Allah says in verse 21, وَبَرَزُوا لِلَّهِ جَمِيعًا فَقَالَ الضُّعَفَاءُ لِلَّذِينَ اسْتَكْبَرُوا إِنَّا كُنَّا لَكُمْ تَبَعًا فَهَلْ أَنْتُمْ مُغْنُونَ عَنَّا مِنْ عَذَابِ اللَّهِ مِنْ شَيْءٍ قَالُوا لَوْ هَدَانَ اللَّهُ لَهَدَيْنَاكُمْ سَوَاءٌ عَلَيْنَا أَجَزِعْنَا أَمْ صَبَرْنَا مَا لَنَا مِنْ مَحِيصٍ so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that on the day of judgment when they're gathered before Allah, the weak will say to those who are arrogant, meaning the followers who followed the Abu Jahars and the Abu Lahabs and the Uqbah ibn Abi Mu'eed, uh, and, and the Akhnas ibn Shuraif and so on and so forth, the followers gather together and they say to them, look, we used to follow you. فَهَلْ أَنْتُمْ مُغْنُونَ عَنَّا مِنْ عَذَابِ اللَّهِ مِنْ شَيْءٍ Are you going to be able to punish, uh, uh, protect us from the punishment of Allah in any way? So they say, لَوْ هَدَانَ اللَّهُ لَهَدَيْنَاكُمْ If Allah would have guided us, we would have guided you. And they say that سَوَاءٌ عَلَيْنَا أَجَزِعْنَا أَمْ صَبَرْنَا مَا لَنَا مِنْ مَحِيص. Look, it doesn't matter. It's the same for us. Whether we show intolerance or are patient now, there is no way to escape hellfire. Meaning right now, it's no point of arguing and it's no point of showing patience or not showing patience or whatever it is or pointing fingers. We're all going to be punished now. There is no escape. So basically what this is referring to is that the human shaitan, shaitan al-ins, that leads you astray, right? That teaches you what you should not be taught. That convinces you that it's okay to stand opposed to divine revelation and so on and so forth. That human shaitan will turn his back on you on the day of judgment. And the actual shaitan, the next verse, verse 22, وَقَالَ الشَّيْطَانُ الْحَقِّ وَوَعَدْتُكُمْ فَأَخْلَفْتُكُمْ وَمَا كَانَ لِي عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْ سُلْطَانٍ إِلَّا أَنْ دَعَوْتُكُمْ فَاسْتَجَبْتُمْ نِي فَلَا تَلُومُونِي وَلُومُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ مَا أَنَا بِمُسْرِخِكُمْ وَمَا أَنْتُمْ بِمُسْرِخِي إِنِّي كَفَرْتُ بِمَا أَشْرَكْتُمُونِ مِنْ قَبْلِ إِنَّ الظَّالِمِينَ إِنَّ الظَّالِمِينَ لَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the speech that shaitan will give on the day of judgment. So the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that just as the people of hellfire are about to enter into hellfire, May Allah protect you and all of us from, you and I and all of us from, uh, from the punishment of hellfire. Shaitan stands up and gives a speech and says, listen, Allah promised you, I promised you, I broke my promise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not. But I did not have authority over you except that I called you and you responded to me. So don't blame me, blame yourselves. 
I'm not going to be able to come to your aid. You will not be able to come to my aid. Inni kafartu bima ashraktum min qabl. I deny my association uh, or the association that you gave me with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before. And he says, Inna dhalimina lahum adabun alim. And verily, the wrongdoers, all of us are now going to have a painful punishment. So Allah mentions the human shaitan and the jinn sh- and the actual shaitan and how they would disassociate from you on the day of judgment. So don't let them turn you away from uh, the goodness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned. And that's why right after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Alam tara kayfa darab Allahu mathalan karimatan tayyibatan kashajaratan tayyiba asluha thabit wa far'uha fis sama tu'ti ukulaha kulla hina bi idni rabbiha Allah mentions the tree of iman, the tree of faith. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions how firm it is in the heart of the believers. That, the, that la ilaha illallah is like a firm tree. It's like a palm tree in your heart. It has a strong foundation. Asluha thabit wa far'uha fis sama. And its branches are high in the sky and it's constantly producing fruit. What that means is shaitan might sway you temporarily. But you will bend but you won't break. You will never break. So if you have the foundation of Iman, Al-Qawl Al-Thabit, okay, La ilaha illallah, strong in your heart, then neither human jinn or shaitan, uh, neither human shayateen or the actual shayateen, the jinn shayateen, will be able to lead you astray from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And finally, Ibrahim alayhi salam. وَإِذْ قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ رَبِّ جَعَلْ هَذَا الْبَلَدَ آمِنَا وَجْنُبْنِي وَبَنِيَ أَنْ نَعْوذِ الْأَصْنَامِ Surah Yusuf, Allah mentioned the dream of Yusuf alayhi salam. This is the dream of Ibrahim alayhi salam. The, the, the dream of Ibrahim alayhi salam is that Mecca become a place of Tawheed, that it become the center of monotheism, that the home that he and his son would construct be a place that always testifies to the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you know, remember when Ibrahim alayhi salam made dua, and he says, Rabbi Jnubni wa Baniya, Rabbi Jal Hadal Amina. O oh Allah, make this place secure and protect me and my sons from worshipping idols. So this is after the city has been established. So in Surah Al Baqarah, the city has not yet been established. And that's why it says, Rabbi Jal Hadha Balada. Okay? Uh, as opposed to Hadal Balad. Al Balad makes it defin- makes it definitive, so it's already there. So the city's, you know, the city's been established. Ibrahim has built the Kaaba with his son Ismail, and he's making du'a. Oh Allah, make this city secure and keep me and my sons away from worshiping idols. So the people of Mecca are betraying the legacy of the, of the father Ibrahim Islam. They're betraying what he wanted from the city of Mecca. Subhanallah, Ibrahim wanted Mecca to be a place of monotheism, and they are kicking out his descendant, the prophet that he wished to see. In the Prophet ﷺ, because he's calling them to keep Mecca as a as a city of uh, you know as a city that is free from idol worship. So basically, Ibrahim Islam has a dream for Mecca, just like Yusuf Islam was given a dream. The Prophet ﷺ will be the fulfillment of that dream of Ibrahim Islam to keep this place of Mecca, a place of Tawheed. And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala mentions. Um, uh, oh Allah, they have led many astray from the people. And he says, So whoever follows me, then he is of me. So you're not of Ibrahim because you have his blood, because you're of his lineage. You're of Ibrahim when you follow the message of, of Ibrahim and uphold the covenant of Ibrahim, Islam, of Abraham, peace be upon him. So, Whoever follows me is of me, and whoever disobeys me, you are forgiving and merciful, so they're not from me, O Allah. Rabbi inni askantu min dhurriyati biwadin ghayri di zar'in inda baytika al muharram. Rabbana liyukimu al salah, faj'al afidata min al nasi tahwi ilayhim warzukuhum min al thamarati la'allahum yashkurun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O oh Allah, look, I've settled my descendants in an uncultivated valley near your sacred house. I'm settling my wife and my son. Uh, Ismail, in the middle of nowhere, in an abandoned desert, but it's near your sacred house, O oh Allah, so that they could establish the prayer. So make the hearts of the people incline toward them and provide for them from the fruit so that they may be grateful. So Ibrahim Islam has a dream that Mecca be a place of Tawheed and Salah, monotheism and prayer. The Prophet will come back to Mecca 
and will rise the same way that Yusuf السلام, rose and he will fulfill the dream of his grandfather Ibrahim السلام, and today we are living that dream of Ibrahim السلام, that dream of Tawheed and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala needs no one and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always exalted in might and praise. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, dignify us and honor us with Tawheed and with Salah with the things that are beloved to him. And we ask Allah to make us of the legacy of Ibrahim alayhi salam, of Yusuf alayhi salam, of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma ameen. Jazakumullah khairan to you all. Inshallah ta'ala, I will see you tomorrow for uh, Juz 14. Please do share the video, inshallah ta'ala, and get people involved in the study. Take your notes, share your notes in the comments if you get a chance, inshallah. Uh, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.